All right, Pisces, what's going on with you? This reading is for mid-September, but I am going to give you a little bit of um, long-range information. I'm looking at your, uh, at your chart, at the transit chart, the planets that are transiting through things, uh, through your houses and where they are and what might be some themes that you might be paying attention to in the next few months, all these retrogrades. We are moving into eclipse season next month, so... Things are being activated in an internal change kind of way. And I want to just give you a heads up on the themes. For example, um, you've got Venus transiting in your sixth house. And so some of you could be like new life, like not doing, uh, I'm not going to do this career anymore if it's not, or this job, if it's not um, something I absolutely love. So that could get activated for you, especially if you have some planets in the sixth house. So we'll talk more about that in the extended. Right now, I'm just going to work with the tarot. I will finish out the tarot reading in the extended like I always do, but I'm going to add that to the extended. Um, next week, we are going to be doing a class on self-love versus self-care and giving you a ton of tools to help you heal. All right. So if you want to jump onto that, there's a link in the description box below. All right. Let's see where we go. Boundaries. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Focus. <laughs> Earth. All right. So I do feel like some of you have um, an idea about where you're going, an idea about what you want to do, but it's going to require, it's going to require a lot more grounding from you. It's going to require a lot more you taking care of you. Okay. So I don't want you to feel like you're alone or anything like that, but I do want you to understand that where your focus goes is where your energy should go. And other people may have other ideas, all right, about what you should be doing or something along those lines. And I just feel like you need to, you know, not, what is it, um, <laughs> Robert Downey Jr., nod, smile, agree, and then do whatever you're going to do anyway, okay? So there's a little bit of that here. And I also feel like you're making good boundaries with certain people. Like there's, there's definitely a feeling of um, maybe someone... Um, um, drawing your attention away from what you need to be focusing on. So somewhat, you know, like a fun, lighthearted romance and you're like, ah, I really need to be focused on my work or something like that. Right. So nine of wands underneath the queen of pentacles. There's the hierophant Taurus energy, seven of wands, eight of cups. Oh, definitely. And towards ace of swords. I like this a lot. I am seeing, okay, I'm going to take these two. All right. Six of Pentacles and the High Priestess. Like you are this. You are somebody who is about service. You know what you're here to do. You know what you want to do. Uh, there's somebody here who has, thinks they have a better idea uh, about what you need to do than what you are doing. And I feel like you kind of have to stand up for yourself. I feel like you have to like kind of lay down the law a little bit with this Ace of Swords and to go on your way. Uh this definitely feels like someone uh, is expecting you to kind of pay homage to them or uh, be um, uh, agreeing with them about where you want to go or what you want to do with your life. And I just feel like you're going in a different direction. So let's lay this out. Five of Wands, the Page of Cups, the Moon, the Four of Wands, definitely moving here. Look, Moon and Death. Wow. Eight of Wands, Strength Card. The Three of Swords, yeah, and the Tower. Wow, I'm not going to let that go. Judgment, Permit, Nine of Swords, Five of Pentacles. Okay, Five of Swords and Knight of Pentacles. So that's a lot. So <laughs> look at the fives. Two fives, three fives. We have all the fives. No, we're missing the Five of Cups. But I kind of see that a little bit. I feel like you're leaving somebody or something behind or a place, like definitely moving Definitely moving on. Um, there's a new offer on the table for you. And this is coming in the new moon in Virgo. Okay. This is coming in the new moon in Virgo. Because I can see it. I can see it in your uh, seventh house here. Moon, sun, and Mercury in the seventh house of relationship. And so there may be a new relationship that it's tempting you to move on from an, from an old place. An old situation that has kind of run its course. Now... I see other people kind of not super psyched that you're going to do this. And I also feel like you um, have some second thoughts at one point. Like, should I do this? I'm not sure. It seems like a big move. Like, why is this even showing up? Because I feel like 
later on, maybe Scorpio time, there's going to be some drastic change and you will be like, phew, I'm glad I listened to my intuition. I'm glad I followed my heart. I'm glad I did this. I almost feel like um, uh, the Virgo new moon, Virgo new moon aligned with the sun and Mercury is kind of saying to you, uh, hey, heads up, there's a relationship that needs that is changing, that's transforming, that's ending. And you have um, you have something that is um, like a new opportunity. I want you to do it. OK, I'm not I usually don't like tell people that like you should do this. But I do feel like uh, if you're if you're um, manifesting some kind of new position, a new job, a new lifestyle, a new partner, something in. Well, you might not be manifesting a new partner if you're if you're in if you're in a relationship that's committed but has kind of run aground. What we're what you're saying is, I want a new beginning with relationship. What it could look like is a new person, a Virgo. I see a Virgo here. I see a Leo here. And I almost feel, or a Scorpio, I almost feel like this person is somebody who sees that you're ready. Okay? If they see that you're ready. So I'm going to say to you that you have to have some boundaries here. Both people seem like they're running over top of your boundaries or both situations feel that way to me. Um, let me clarify this death card here. There is a lot of transformation going on in these all these readings. Change could happen really fast here. Nine of Pentacles, the Emperor, the Justice card and the Ace of Pentacles. Absolutely. So look at that beautiful energy of where you're going. I almost feel like this says if you stand still, if you don't take the path that's being offered to you, if you hesitate, um, you might feel like you've missed your chance. I don't think you have. All right. I don't think you have. But I think there's going to be like a, an opportunity to go in a certain way. And then you're like, really? really? Like I'm going to move on from this situation? Yes. Ace of swords. It's an opportunity for you to strike out in a direction that you've always wanted to. And I just feel like you might not trust the um, kind of um, synchronicity of it, right? If you are in this place where you know something is closing up, you know something is ending, the Leo in, in the sixth house my day, something about your daily routine, your day job, whatever is closing up. If it's not something that you have a lot of love for, if you have a lot of love for a particular job or a particular um, daily routine, like it's really, you know, it's something that you have worked for for a long time. I don't feel like that's closing up. I feel like what's closing up is in another part of your life that is has become routine. OK, has become routine. And, you know, there might be somebody in your life that has been like a fixture, like a piece of the furniture, someone who you just expected to be in your life forever and ever. Amen. And that might they may if you don't make a, a move like they make a move to go in a new direction. And it's kind of sudden. I feel like what's coming in here is life partner energy. Ace of Pentacles. This is a committed, this could be, okay, so this feels like husband, wife, partner, right? You do have moon, mer, uh, sun, and mercury in the seventh house, but it's fleeting, okay? It's fleeting. There's definitely Virgo energy here too. What's, what's here is Taurus energy. And Taurus is in, I'm just looking at your chart here, Taurus is... Uh, your third house, Jupiter and Uranus are in retrograde in that third house. So this is more of a community. This could be more of a family member. This could be more of a best friend or somebody that you, um, you, you have built some kind of uh, stable, solid relationship with. And like you're moving on to find the love of your life or your, or your, the love of your life shows up or a career, a job across the country shows up. And it's like, I can't leave this behind there. This might be a parent. This might be somebody who is, who you feel is um, a part of your life, your daily living, a part of your daily living. And that 
needs to go in its own direction. That needs to, this, this needs to be less, um, uh, codependent or less, less leaning on you, less leaning on you. Okay. And so you are going in this new direction. This is something that is spiritually divinely guided here. This transformation is, could be really, really fast. If you take this kind of, um, if you make a, 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 in the new moon in Virgo, if you make an ask to the universe, I feel like literally by Scorpio time, you could be living in a new place. Okay, Scorpio time, it's super fast. And there's a chance that you got out of the way of something here. Also, you could, if you move really fast, right? You move really fast. You go with this person. You go in this direction. Hey, like things are starting to open up. It's really great. There's something that happens with this person. I'm going to clarify this. Queen of Pentacles and this High Priest. What happens here? Two of Pentacles, King of Cups, Ace of Wands, and the three of wands, nothing, there's nothing bad happening here with this person. When you leave it behind, I think you think something bad's going to happen, but I don't, nothing bad will happen. This person will have to change. This person will have to do things for themselves. This person will, but I feel like it's really good. I feel like you need to get away from this situation um, because you have other places to go, other things to do. So I want you, I think what's blowing up here is your sense of responsibility for this situation or your sense of like, you know, I can't leave this job. I've been doing it forever. And if I leave this job, the whole place is going to collapse. And maybe it does because it's really kind of up to them whether it collapses or not. It's not up to you. It's not up to you to protect this person or this situation from change. It's not up to you to protect them from that. In fact, they need that. And if they don't do that, there's tower energy here. I feel like you will have moved off in a different direction. I also feel like this person or this situation is going to try to make you feel really bad for leaving. Okay. So I'm going to see where we go. I'm going to look at more at your chart. I'll give you more on the astrology. Let's keep going. The link is, is in the description box below. If this is your reading Pisces, I'll see you over there. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. If it was helpful to you, please consider liking this video and sharing it with anybody who might have a need for similar kind of information. And if you like this video, check out these videos.